Okay, so now look at this next problem for finding shear force and bending moment diagram. Again, just to remember, and I'm and I'm drilling this into your head so that it's it's easy for you to follow, and that is that the slope of SFD equal to BMD, sorry, equals load distributed load slope of BMD equal to SFD and jumps in shear force diagram equals concentrated load upwards positive jumps in bending moment diagram equal to concentration moment counterclockwise negative clockwise positive so remember that so now we are ready as usual we draw first our axis x and y then step 2 find reaction forces in our case we already did that and then we can draw and draw FPD with all forces and as we said before draw a large free body diagram because it will help you so I'm going to draw another one of those long ones so that you can see oops so that you can see so I'm going to draw okay so we have already calculated this so I'm going to write it down 2.5 kilonewtons from this reaction that's that and then that one is 7.5 that turns out to be that guy and then we have this distributed load up to half the beam okay this is 2 kilonewton per meter and then there is a concentrated moment and that's going 50 kilonewton meter notice it's counterclockwise sorry so notice that it is clockwise so it is going to jump up okay so that's our free body diagram so now we're going to draw our shear force diagram and i'm going to mark these two points and i'm going to draw a straight line through and then i'm going to mark this point i'm going to mark this point i'm going to mark this point and we are ready so we are going to jump up by 2.5 kilonewtons so I'm going to say okay so we are going to use that it's about seven and a half kilonewtons right so we are going to use uh, roughly uh, each one is one so one two two and a half so that's my initial jump and then as usual it's always convenient to find the areas this area will be two times five that's 10 kilonewtons so I know that this is going to be down from here by 10 so 2.5 minus 10 is minus 7.5 that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 and a half so it's going to be a straight line that goes like this and then it's going to go flat, so seven and a half goes all the way down and jumps up by seven and a half. So this one is seven and a half. This total height ten is this area. Right? So now we have introduced a new point, that point, which turns out to be if I want to find out, so notice that uh, this is two and a half and I want to come down so from two and a half this slope is um, two units so it's actually a fairly easy calculation to see that this is 1.25 units okay and the area under this curve a1 
is my is actually plus 2.5 times 1.5 divided by 2 which turns out to be 1.56 okay and the area here is minus 12.5 if you compute it, it will turn out to be minus 12.5. No, sorry. Uh, it's, it's more like 14.5 uh, this area. Okay, if you compute it roughly, I'm, I'm just giving you a rough idea for these numbers. Okay, so that's, that's our basic dimensions. And uh, this area is 7.5 times 5, it is uh, 37.5. So we need these areas and I am putting negative. Areas that are below the x-axis are negative. Areas that are above the x-axis are positive. So we will we'll use that information. So now we are ready to draw the bending moment diagram. So again, make yourself plenty of space. So. So I'm going to start out here at 0 and you notice first thing is again it's a parabola this whole thing is one giant parabola you can see that right initial slope is is uh, 2.5 final slope is minus 7.5 so it starts out initially at a slope of 2.5 and it ends up here with a slope of minus 7.5 you can see that the parabola is going to look like that okay uh, that's that's going to be the shape of the parabola so it's going to reach a maximum the question is where does it reach a maximum it's at this point because there the slope is zero so zero slope that's the maximum point so it's going to look like a parabola which is downwards why is it downwards can you see the distributed load is saying down point down so the parabola is going to point downwards the same way as a distributed load so it's going to look like that ay, ay, ay. i'm terrible at drawing these things By the way, the location of this is way down here at minus, so it starts out at zero, it goes up and then it will come down and it turns out that this is the height to which it goes. So let's mark these points. At this point, its height will be 1.56, that's this number. So this area will be this height. And that's 1.56 and then this area will be this subtract that area from here and you will get minus 12.5 that's equal to 1.56 minus 14.06 that's this area minus that area so what will happen is My parabola looks and then very steep. So this this slope is actually 7.5, negative 7.5. This slope is positive 2.5. This location is where the slope is 0 and its height is given by this area. that area is here then after that that much area I subtract now comes the interesting part if I try to complete this by saying okay from now on from here on the slope is minus 7.5 and you go like this that would be wrong why is that wrong because 
you forgot this concentrated load. So what this concentrated load is going to do is jump this up by 50. It's going to go way out here. I told you, right? This bending moment diagram will jump up and down a lot. So there, it's going to go way up there. It's going to jump up by 50. And so this height is 37.5. That height is 12.5. Together they make up the jump of 50. And then from there, it's a nice straight line. So it goes zero. So compared to these numbers, this is huge. Of course, you can see that my drawing is not to scale because I didn't give, a, give enough space. If I actually draw the drawing to scale, it will completely, you know, the bending moment diagram will be huge. So I want you to understand that bending moment diagram, you have to be careful. This jump comes from the concentrated moment. So as usual, the main thing is if you cross the if you cross the x axis with your shear force there will be a maximum or minimum okay so you have to mark that point and figure out how high it is and it all depends upon this area so this area is this height then subtract out that area and you'll get this location then add this area after you jump and all that and you'll get that one okay so it's kind of a tricky issue so i hope uh, you got this one